To me, Israel represents a place of, even though Israel has a bad rap in the press and there's a lot of darkness associated with it, to me, Israel represents a place of light. I mean, it's where I, we really started to discover God and it's where we're connected with Judaism. It's where, it's a place where I, I just always felt there's a certain feeling of, of unity there and a feeling of light and uh, yeah, just oh, forever wanted to go make music there. Sir, <laughs> permission to speak, please. <laughs> so what are we doing there? He has granted permission. Permission granted! <laughs> Granting of permission granted. <laughs> Grant worthy. Do you feel yourself playing anything else on this? Are you good? I could do a solo over there. Solo! <laughs> <laughs> This life filled with so much life I'm gonna love with all of my might Open my eyes and give me the sight Want all of your love now all of the time Give you my soul now all of my mind Wish I could just hit rewind Rewind We were very excited we get to the studio It's a long a trip, 10 hours from New York I think it was overnight We get in, we get to Tel Aviv Have our falafel fix probably by that point and I felt like going to Israel was like, obviously, we were going to get to the roots. And as soon as we got there, like all the roots came to us. You know, it's just the type of thing where we could just say like, well, let's go to Israel. Let's record some music in Israel. We didn't need permission from a record company or anything like that. We just go and do it. How long were there? A week? Ten days? Ten days. For ten days, we just had musicians cycling through. People coming by, playing their instrument for us, recording them. Um, on different songs, writing new songs, um, just great people. That's, that's, that's the thing about it. That's why I wanted to go in the first place. Our first guy that came in, Elad, we don't know. He was a little bit nervous about what he was doing there, why he was there. Uh, no, no charts, no rehearsals. And these two um, American buffoons drinking beer and <laughs> jumping up and down on cushions in the studio when he would do something that would excite them. <laughs> and then he got excited when we, at one point I went into the, the booth and I did a beatbox with him. Yo. Yo, cool coach easy. You know me, I'm getting easy. And that's when we made Summer Wind. Summer Wind. frescoes of freshness and he like gave a uh, historical backbone to everything that we did he's bringing it he's bringing it it seems that now he would be playing like a uh, I don't know like a coin purse a change purse or something Oof, shit is crispy that shit is mad then, crispy you know Kojak then took that and incorporated that into the, the beats that we had and the fact that the, the record is such a, a sort of like beat-centered record, the combination is sort of one of the 
bedrock sounds of the whole record. When you mention his name, oh, Zahar Fesco. Everybody said that. Oh, Zahar Fesco. So he's, he's no joke and comes in with um, you know a bunch of different percussion instruments and played his butt off on like every almost every song. Excellent, man. Excellent. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. Woo! Ow! Let's uh, put the next one on for him. All right, next yeah, one. Yeah, we can so move right along. You like this? You, you hear yourself on this? Or not really? You say about Ravid, except no man has a voice like Ravid upon the earth. True indeed. Hey. Yeah, he sings exclusively on Arabic on the record. I mean, we were going back to the elementals of some, you know, roots of Arabic music. I think it might be cool. Unless you want to just... The maestro is When I saw and I read the papers and I saw you know what happened with Sean that he got out of jail and he was Orthodox and all that, um, I don't know how exactly we connected, but we connected on the phone and talked about making some music together. No writing, he doesn't write anything down. He just sits on the couch, sat on the couch for about an hour, thinking through his his rhymes, and then going to the the booth and cut it. Yeah, and he has a lot to say. I mean, Sean's been on a hell of a journey. Oh, yeah. That's, that's ten you gotta years, shut down. Man. That ain't 10 months. That's 10 years if you don't get a birthday card. That's 10 years of Hanukkahs and all that, holidays, summers, 4th of July, whatever. You know, secular, religious, whatever it is, that's 10 years. Rain, snow, summer, everything. The cycle just keeps going, and no matter who's there, no matter who's not there, your emotions got to be the same. There's no, there's no, oh, Sean had to go. I'd have never got out of prison if I kept this person in there with all that philosophy. Because that means if somebody say something crazy, I'm going to tear their head off. I had to learn how to tear their head off without letting the police know, and let, without letting a bunch of witnesses know, and being cool and being calm. It was impossible not to feel it, like electric in the room. There's a segment of the population that just wants me to put out excellent music. They just want to be able to hear clearly it's what true. I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. They want that conviction that Sean used to have. Exactly. I feel not a lot of people can understand where he's coming from, and I feel I really can because he's, he's an artist, and the way that he is exper you know, experiencing is his life is from the inside out, you know? And it's not about being this or being that or you know, being black, being Jewish, being from this place or that place. He always felt a connection. Unlike the rest of these guys, they're, they're characters, you know, they're, they're, they're living vicariously mm -hmm. through the Larry Hoovers and through the Tukey Williams and through the guys like me. I really do that, you understand? So when I get in that booth, it's like, man, I don't want to get back into that Sean Poe, that gully. I'm afraid what's gonna happen if I do that. Yeah. I don't know. And we took the Jeep 
through the checkpoint and up into the settlements and immediately just started writing, started creating a song. And the song is telling the story of our day. We got it. We got it. We got the hits. We got the hits right here. Yeah, was bullet Beneath show. my feet, bullet show. I'm feeling easy, the ocean breeze, babe. Carrying me, I'm telephoning. And now I'm seeing. So, showing, trying to show all the dimensions, you know, several dimensions of a place that's, you know, had such, such an intense history. And this terrain of the plains that's beneath my feet. I'm on a Jeep at twilight. On the top floor of the balcony, yeah. and they were parading the Air Force past us down the beach over the Mediterranean. F-15s. I was able to record the sound with my iPhone. Yeah. Which then integrated itself into the record. No, I had no interest in getting on the camel. Absolutely not. Alright, oh hell, I'm not climbing on a wild okay, camel. Vince, I'm a <laughs> maniac, man. And being there was kind of like, you know, being on the battleground. But where do you fit into that scenario? Israel represents a place of, even though Israel has a bad rap in the press and there's a lot of darkness associated with it, me, Israel represents a place of light. I mean, it's where I, we really started to discover God, and it's where where I connected with Judaism. It's where it's a place where I, I just always felt there's a certain feeling of of unity there. I mean, that's how the, this whole project has kind of come together. It's like so sort of seeing it as a, a project and. Um, going where we needed to go and watching the whole thing unfold. Because we didn't we didn't start this record with a plan that, oh, we're gonna go to Israel, we're gonna record this, we're gonna record that. This started with just us getting together one day in the studio. Modest Yahoo joins me here in the studio. Modest, welcome back. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm well, so something's different. <laughs> you posted this photo of yourself uh, yesterday on Twitter, shaven, the, with the beard off, and it has just um, kind of become a thing in the Twitterverse. Uh, you accompanied that with this statement. No more Hasidic reggae superstar. Sorry, folks, all you get is me. No alias. I am reclaiming myself. It feels like, wow, you know, who is that guy? You know, who is that person? You know, why did I choose to represent myself in such an extreme way, you know? So, well, what, why did I make that choice? And you know, I did that for, for 10 years you know, in my life. And at the time when I decided to, to start growing my beard, I, wanted to, I was looking for something that's, that's ancient, something that was beyond me beyond the boundaries of myself. And the beard in, in the Kabbalah and the mysticism is referred to as Atik Yamim, the ancient days. You can have a real inner experience of these things. And, you know, the outer symbols are, are cool, but sometimes you need, you need to strip everything back. The way I see it is that the music, the music speaks to people and the music will speak to people. And, but anyone, you know, people, people, when people become afraid, they act too quickly. You know, they judge too quickly. They, um, they, you know, they write their feelings down. They point the finger quickly. People who are really fans, who are really sort of um, confused or, or don't understand, you know, 
why I've you know changed whatever changed my appearance so much will be able to to actually connect the as deep if not deeper you know with this record than anything I've ever put out All I got is my life. I had met a guy a couple years ago named Jack Knight. He had said that he had wanted to, to write for me. And Jack, Jack's sort of a behind the scenes cat who's written a lot of the songs that we've heard on the radio over the last 20 years, 15 years, I don't know. So he, uh, he brought to my attention a song that he wrote with, I think, us in mind called Warrior. You played it for me. and. Uh, I think it was kind of undeniable from the first moment, it just felt right, so. Just like a warrior. Just like a warrior? Like burn it, like maybe you want to say, instead of a third fire, burn it like a warrior. I think repeating it three times is cool. Well, the song was, was undeniable. Um, modest flavor, and then uh, I got together with Modest and Jungle George, and we put together the mayhem that is the song. We just gave it all the gusto, gave it the uh, ran it through the old chop shop, shall we say? We shall. When Jack wrote the song, he had in mind uh, his daughter in school had been going through some bullying stuff, so, so you know, there's some, some of that stuff, you know, inspirational song written for people who are going through some kind of struggle to try to overcome, but I think that it resonates strong with kids, for sure. The survival anthem. Mm -hmm. Dedicated to my son, Shalom. We had to make sense of what we had. And, uh... Bring some logic to that mess. Indeed. The album is, it's, it's a documentation of this, uh, you know, kind of episode of change that we went through. And kind of, we documented it with expressions of our feelings and our soul through music. And, you know, from Danny to Zohar, Ravid, Shine, you know what I mean? Even just like Shine, you know, having him on more than one song, you know what I mean? We just, we really, we, we really use what we did with people, you know. Just let this thing happen through enjoying making music. Organics. And that's how all the real important things came out, because it was easy and fun. That's the blessing, that we've been blessed to make that kind of music and to go to Israel and, and kind of have, have that experience. That's what we try to do. Through the desert, searching for the spark secret. <laughs>